now coming to the part of the importance basically in the atmosphere we know that continuously the pressure is there the rainfall is there the temperature is there these are all different type of components for the atmosphere and these all together they make up the weather of any area so basically weather of any area is very important because weather is actually keeps changing and for that the activities of the people activities of the animals are also changing with the changes of the weather that is why the weather is very important now coming to the part of the importance of the gases the first gas that is abundance in nature that is nitrogen gas the 78% of the air is made up with the nitrogen gas the nitrogen gas actually what is the importance of that particular gas the nitrogen gas when it is going to mix with the soil it helps to increase the fertility of the soil that is why it is very important for our life apart from the nitrogen the next constituency of the gas is oxygen gas it is having the 21% now 21% of the oxygen maybe it is 21% but it is very necessary for the all living beings because it is the life saving gas already we know that without the oxygen any single life cannot be sustained over the earth surface that is why it is the life saving gas now apart from this oxygen continuously help us for the burning procedure that is why oxygen gas is very important now apart from oxygen we have the ozone gas now what is the ozone of importance of the ozone gas in the nature now ozone gas is very important to us because continuously it protect us from the harmful uv rays of the sun so it acts like a shield and as it is present in the atmosphere the uv rays cannot directly fall over our skin and if it is directly going to fall over our skin we can have the skin cancer or other skin related disease that is why the protection of the uv rays that is very necessary and as ozone gas is present there continuously it act as a shield to protect us from this kind of the harmful rays of the sun now apart from ozone gas we have very important gas known as the co2 or carbon dioxide gas maybe the portion of the carbon dioxide is very small in the atmosphere it is 0.03% but the importance of the carbon dioxide it is lying in the atmosphere now why it is important carbon dioxide is very important for the plants because they take the carbon dioxide and with the help of carbon dioxide sunlight they prepare the food and directly or indirectly we get the food from the plants and apart from that carbon dioxide keeps the earth warm how it is keeping the earth warm because it continuously absorb the sun rays that is going to reflect it or radiate it from the surface of the earth and by that it keeps or balancing the temperature of the earth and apart from all this gas we have dust particles and water vapor so dust particles and water vapor they are also having their particular functions to perform in the nature they are collaborating with each other they are combining with each other and by that they do the condensation process and lastly it is going to transfer into rainfall or precipitation process and that is very important for a water cycle to maintain so you can see together it is also very important for a particular atmospheric area or a particular area so these are all the particular importance of the atmosphere we learn now apart from that the last natural domain we have is known as the biosphere now biosphere already you can see in the diagram that time we are discussing about the biosphere it is drawn in a intersecting point of the lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere and in middle that you can see the zone of biosphere have been drawn now why it is drawn in the middle there is a certain reason without the reason it cannot be drawn in the middle why it is drawn in the middle because biosphere is a zone where it is a narrow zone where lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere they meet and they actually interchange or interacting with each other this collective zone is known as the biosphere that's why it is drawn in the middle or intersecting point of the lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere so basically biosphere it is a narrow zone where land air water it meet 
and actually they are interacting with each other. Now this zone basically if we simplify the statement biosphere is a layer where all the living organisms live because the word biosphere the word bio means life and sphere means layer. So where the living organisms sustain that layer is only known as the biosphere. Now it is the life saving layer because in this biosphere all the life can be sustained. Now in this particular biosphere it is one of the unique feature of our planet earth and for the biosphere it is making the planet earth into one of the unique planet in the solar system because it is the only layer and it is the layer only present in the earth it is not present in the other particular planet or any other planets that is why it is making our art a unique planet in the solar system. Now in the biosphere already we know that we have different type of the living beings, animals, plants and human beings. Now it can vary in size. Animal means it can start with a small microscopic organism to a large animal to large number of trees along with human beings. Together they make up the biosphere. Now in the biosphere already we know that there are lots of variety of the living organisms. Now all these living organisms together this great variety is known as the biological diversity or it is known as the biodiversity. So basically biodiversity or biological diversity means all the living organisms starting from small microscopic organism to a large animal, plants and human beings together they are known as the biological diversity or biodiversity. Now all these particular animal, plants and all the type of the microorganisms they are actually constituting the biosphere. So if we need to classify the components of the biosphere they can be broadly classified into two main category. One is plant kingdom, one is animal kingdom. And in the animal kingdom actually the human beings are very much included. So basically plant and animal kingdom together they make up the biosphere and continuously they are interacting with each other. Now how they are interacting with each other or how the living organisms they interact with each other. Basically they interact with each other through the transfer of heat and matter or through the transfer of energy and matter. Now how the energy is going to transfer? Actually energy is coming from the sun and by the sun rays, the sun rays can be tapped only by the plants and by that they are making their food. Through the food directly or indirectly that is going to actually capture by the animals and by the human beings. So directly or indirectly they get the energy in their body by that and basically with this you can see all the energy and matter that is actually rotating in a recycling manner in the nature. So this is actually known as the ecological balance. Ecological balance means the balance is getting maintained from a sun to trees and from the plants to a number of animals including the human beings. This balance is known as the ecological balance. Once this balance is going to hamper or going to disrupt it, what is the meaning of the disrupted? Means if what is actually coming from the sun the amount of the energy that is coming from the sun is less than what is going out from a particular area or what is going out from the particular surface that time the balance is not going to maintain and basically in that point of time the ecological balance is actually going to hamper and that time we can see lots of negative impact is there in the environment. Now apart from that in the biosphere we have to learn that Biosphere is actually for the living organisms but living organisms are not equally distributed over the earth surface. It is very much unequal distribution we can see. How it is unequal distribution? You can take examples of any area. Let us look at the example of desert. You can see in the example of the desert. In the desert what we visualize when we talk about the desert we can see a stretch of sand is there along with certain number of cactus or other type of plants and some number of animals or very common animals like camels or rattlesnakes these are very common in the desert that can be seen in the desert so this is actually about the desert area of plants and animals let us look the example or let us take the example of the higher mountain or polar region in the high mountain or polar region we can see that most of the trees in that area is actually conical in shapes that is why they are known as the coniferous trees and apart from that the animals are also totally different from the desert. What kind of animals we can see in the high mountain or polar area? 
in the high mountain or polar region we can see the animals are more or less having long and thick fur and apart from that snow leopard or other type of the yak this is a very common animal for the high mountain area that is for the only high mountain area so you can easily see that changes in the area along with that animals are going to be changed and the plants are also going to be changed this proves that animals and plants are not same all over the part of the world they are changing with the physical environment as physical environment is going to change along with that animals and plants are also going to change with that and this is actually known as the ecosystem now we are coming to the part where we will be discussing the idea regarding the ecosystem now what is ecosystem ecosystem means a uh, kind of biospheric area or different area of the biosphere where they have their own physical and chemical characteristics and different set of biological characteristics this zone is known as one ecosystem if we simplify the statement we can easily understand it in a better way now ecosystem means a kind of system where the all the biological things or living organisms they are not only interacting with each other but also they are interacting with their physical and chemical environment already we have learned about the examples like high mountain area you can take the examples of the other area like plain area animals and plants are totally different why they are different because their physical characteristics may be weather climate or other characteristics or landforms are going to change and along with that their nature are also going to change the type of the plants and animals are also going to change this is known as an ecosystem so idea of the ecosystem and ecological balance it is very much related to our biosphere and as we maintain the biosphere we have to maintain the ecological balance so that the matter will be or energy will be transferred properly from the sun to the last organisms and according to that everything will be in a perfect balance in the nature so up to this we importance so the last section of the particular chapter that we are going to discuss is about the human environment now basically human beings they are the only living organisms they are very important in the biosphere and why they are important in the biosphere or why they are important for the biosphere they are the only living organisms who can change or modify their own environment now how they can change or modify their own environment that we are going to discuss is actually in a later part but now you have to understand why human beings are important for the earth because human beings are the only one who with their own mind or with their own knowledge they can easily change or modify their environment now if we are going to discuss about the early humans we know that early humans they actually they were living in the environment and they have been adjusted themselves with the environment in a certain way so that they are not supposed to harm the environment and that is why the environment was much more pure and positive in that particular point of time but if we discuss nowadays with the course of time time actually when the civilized civilization have been in a progress so basically in the process of time or in this particular time period the people have seen that there is a increase in demand from the people continuously their demand have been increased with the course of time and as their demand have been increased to adjust their increasing demand they started to modify their own environment by doing certain number of activities and some of the activities are having very negative impact in the nature and some of the activities are more or less for the good progress of the civilization now what kind of activities they did most of the activities like farming grazing mining construction of buildings roads their own houses construction of any other structure apart from that deforestation cutting down of the trees all they actually did for the survival purpose and for that continuously they are changing their environment and already in the past they changed their environment and for this we have seen that lots of problems are actually arising in the nature and all these are actually degrading our environment in this process and by that degradation have been only done by the human beings and environment is having the all negative impact because of this kind of the human activities 
Now that is why in the end of the chapter, in the last part, we have to understand and we have to think in a rather scientific way to make sure our activities will not harm the nature and rather with that we can see we can save the nature and we have to plan according to that so that we can save the nature and we can make something for our future generation so that they will get the pure type of environment or pure type of nature where they can live or survive properly. That is why the rational thinking and scientific thinking is very much necessary for doing all the activities. Without knowing, we should not do any kind of activities and we should not exceed the amount of the activities. Maybe certain number of activities are having very really positive effect, but we should not do in a way much more in an excessively way so that we need to rethink regarding our activities. Now, up to this part, actually, we have learned about the human environment. Now, in the last part of the chapter, you can see, once we are going to recap what we did actually up to the whole chapter or what we learned in the whole chapter you can see let's recap in this part first things we have learned the word origin from where the word environment has come it has come from a french word environer which means the neighborhood apart from that we learned about the definition we learned about the classification in the classification you can see we have learned the definition also we have learned the classification also we have learned in the classification we have learned that the environment can be broadly classified into two main category one is natural environment and one is the human environment Natural environment can be classified into two more categories, physical and biological and also examples have been given here. Human environment can be classified according to their activities, according to their creations and all their other type of the environment that is included in the human environment or human made environment. Now here another thing we should mention that or we should learn that the 5th June every year the day is celebrated as the World Environment Day to make sure people will get the awareness or people will have the awareness to save their own environment or not to harm their environment in a negative way. Now apart from that we have learned about the ecosystem we learn that it is a kind of system where the living organisms not only they are interacting with each other they are also interacting with their physical and chemical environment and last part of the chapter it is about the human activities certain number of activities are actually doing negative impact on the environment and for that we need to stop that kind of activities to save the environment or to conserve the environment for the future generation and for the generation which is going to come.